two little LED downlighters, and when I saw the listing for these, I was quite uh, taken by the sort of mechanism they use for going through the ceiling. It's like when you mount them in the ceiling, you basically make a hole that's just barely enough to clear, clear the centre core. And then you squeeze these springy strips in, you push it up, and when they spring out again, theoretically it holds it up against the ceiling. I'm not sure how easy it would be to get it back out again. It might be quite bitey in terms of dragging it back out. But the listing for these said one or three watt recessed mini spotlight lamp ceiling mounted LED downlight. And uh, it's, the seller was, in this case, was Oppo here, O-P-P-O-H-E-R-E. -E. And I thought, I'll get one of each. I'll get the three watt one and the one watt one, and I'll compare the temperatures of them, see how hot they get, and also what they can sort of, the drivers are like. So they arrived, and uh, let me get the hockey meter up. So let's uh, start with the one watt one, and we'll just stuff the wires into these really convenient electrical dodgy uh, speaker terminal type arrangement. And I shall plug it in. And it's lit up. Holds the metal bit, despite it not being terribly wise. And the power is actually about 1.6 watts for the one watt one. So that's interesting. I wonder how much of that is the LED versus the uh, versus uh, losses in the power supply. I wouldn't think there'd be too high losses, so it might just be tolerance that it is uh, driving it at a bit higher current. Okay, so let's unplug that and let's try the three watt one. So this one has a three watt power supply. So let's jam the wires in here precariously. Power it up. And this one is uh, roughly the same power. It's uh, roughly 1.6 watts. So, in reality, these LED lights are exactly the same power. Let's uh, precariously pull these wires out, noting that the neutral I just pulled out there was live momentarily. Let's uh, get this out of the way. And what they've actually done here is, if you read what it says in the box, it says, uh, one watt LED driver, 100 to 260 volts AC, uh, output 1.8 to 4 volts at 300 milliamps. And that is typically about 3 volts, 350, 300 milliamps is what you'd use the one watt driver. And then you look at the three watt version, and it definitely is, it's a, it's a three watt driver. But the difference is it's designed for one to three one watt lamp LEDs in series. So the output voltage is, goes from three to 12 volts. It's designed to accommodate the wider voltage range that you could either use one LED as they're using in this case, or you could wire this one in series and then another one as well. And that would uh, still come within its 12 volts and again limited to 300 milliamps. So in reality, the only thing that's three watt about this light is the power supply. So let's pop the power supplies open. Let's uh, zoom down just a little bit. So where's my spudger? Spudger. These are going to be the standard little modules, aren't they? That would normally squeeze into the back of a GU10. Let's just short that to capacitor. I prefer uh, getting my surprises from expecting them. So this one has the classic arrangement. It's got the bridge rectifier here. It's got the uh, smoothing capacitor. What is that rated at? It's quite an unusual colour of smoothing capacitor. 2.2 uh, microfarad, 400 volts, not super generous. XZS, or XZS if you prefer. Oh, it's actually got a little, uh, it's theoretically I said it's actually a class Y uh, interference capacitor, that's interesting. Uh, the chip in it, am I going, going to be able to read this chip? Oh, no, I'm not going to be able to read the chip. The text is tiny. It's uh, They aren't really optimized. It's just one of those huge numbers. Z6KL7LOMO. I'm not even going to look that up. Or is it DMO? Yeah, I'm not even going to look that up. That is just one of those vague, clony type wow. chips. Um, it will have the similar, similar, similar topology, the similar sort of style to the uh, classic uh, bright powery type chips. I keep bringing bright power up because they were one of the first to really uh, develop these chips, I think, uh, to really sort of commercialize them. This one has a 400 volt 
4.7, this one's got the better capacitor here. It's not got the interference suppression. It's theoretically got isolation, but you know, you can't really allow for that really being isolated from input to output because these little transformers are made very cheaply and the windings are just wound straight over the top. The chip in this one is a ah, SM7513, which I do recognize the number of. I can't remember what it is. SM7513. Uh, very similar pinout to the other one, by the look of it and similar component arrangement. Just very, very simple, just pretty much, uh, is that a sense resistor? 3.9 ohm, that's a sense resistor there, and then there's a little decoupling capacitor there for presumably power supply smoothing of the chip itself. What's this one got? Uh, this one has a 2.5 ohm resistor in that same position. Um, And then 754, uh, 750k, what is that for over there? Is that part of the power supply or some sort of suppression? Not really sure. Uh, that's that kind of anonymously type chip. But uh, going back out again, let's zoom back out again, take a look at the lights themselves, because they are quite interesting for one other reason. <laughs> Normally with these lights, it's the front that unscrews and as you tighten it up, it, it pushes the collimating lens in and that squeezes the LED against the back and that's the heat sinking. But in these ones, it's completely different. It's the, the LED is mounted in the back here and it's a standard, it's a full-size Luxian type LED which just opens uh, the avenue for, uh, it gives lots of options for customising with uh, your own choice of LEDs. Let's see if I can find an LED up here. Like this grow light type LED that you could put in the sort of purpley colour, the sort of what they call full spectrum, it's that sort of magenta-ish colour, it's really not full spectrum. But um, that uh, then pushes down, when you put this in, uh, I can't actually tear it out because it is gripped in by these screws, which is maybe why they did it this way, it's got the collimating lens and as you screw this down, and it does have heat sink compound, the LED is kind of forced into the end of the lens and as you tighten up it, it probably squishes the lens to lines this LED about on the heatsink compound to line up the lens. And it's got that slight tolerance, this fractional millimetre gap here that uh, it does actually squeeze the lens. There's no slop or slackness in the lens. So that uh, LED is being pushed hard against the back of this and then it is kind of relying on the threads to thermally conduct onto the housing. But at one watt it's not going to get excessively hot anyway. So they're nice enough little lights, but I'm just slightly perplexed that uh, they said, you know, one watt and three watt, and then the only difference was the power supply, particularly if you think that the three watt one is designed to run three of these in series, um, unless they do a little wiring loom that lets you uh, fan out and connect several LED, several of these in series using the one power supply. Strange. But um, neat enough little lights anyway. I quite like, as I've said in the past, I quite like these little aluminium sort of machined lights. I think they're quite smart. I like the whole idea of the lens being pinched in at, when you screw it shut and pushing the LED into good thermal contact at the back without any other hardware, just a bit of uh, heat sink compound. But um, smart enough little lights.